the New Hampshire Constitution, our state laws, and the Federal Help America Vote Act all guarantee every citizen of voting age the right to accessible barrier-free voting and voter registration, regardless of disability. The right of accessibility extends not only to the physical layout of polling places, but to the voting process as well. New Hampshire is addressing its obligations to provide barrier-free voting by creating, in cooperation with election officials, polling places that are free from physical barriers and that contain a system that make the process of marking and casting a ballot available to all eligible persons, including persons with the full range of disabilities. The accessible voting system that is being deployed, called One for All, is a software-driven system that is composed entirely of commercial off-the-shelf hardware and programming designed for New Hampshire voters by Dr. Juan Gilbert and his staff at the University of Florida, PCC consultants, and the staff at the New Hampshire Department of State. One for All is designed to accommodate all voters, including those voters who cannot mark a traditional paper ballot without assistance. Unlike the system previously deployed for this purpose, internet and telephone connections are not required or supported by this system. One for All uses a touchscreen and a keyboard, and it can accept sound commands through the microphone on the headset if selected to do so. The system also provides options for creating ballots on demand or for marking pre-printed ballots. The purpose of this short video is to provide election officials with a clear demonstration on how to assemble the accessible voting booth and one for all, the accessible voting system. The accessible voting booth is a four-sided nylon enclosure that has a roof panel and front curtains marked with the NH Votes logo and the wheelchair symbol. It measures six feet by six feet by 80 inches high and is supported by fiberglass tension rods affixed to each side of the booth. The booth comes folded in a nylon sleeve. The easiest way to erect the booth is to have two people present, one of whom will hold the sleeve while the other extracts the booth. The booth has no loose parts and is ready to deploy as soon as it is free of the sleeve. Each of the two people present need to find the sides of the booth and then locate the nylon pool cords that are located on the outside of the booth in the middle of each side. The booth is erected by one person pulling on the cord until the tension rods on that side are engaged and then the person on the other side pulling on that cord until those tension rods are engaged. The booth is freestanding and ready for the table and other equipment that comprise the one-for-all accessible voting system. The table and other equipment can either be assembled inside the accessible voting booth or they can be assembled outside the booth and moved in when fully assembled. The table is a standard composite table that is 5 feet long, 30 inches deep, and has 29 inches of clearance from the floor to the bottom of the tabletop. The table is readied by placing it on its side and pulling out each leg assembly all the way to its full perpendicular position. As each leg is fully extended, be sure to engage the locking device. Once the locking devices on each leg are engaged, stand the table upright. The components that comprise the One for All accessible voting system are located in a green 18-gallon Rubbermaid storage bin. The first step in assembling the system is to unpack everything. The bin should contain a 50-foot extension cord, a lamp, a clipboard, sheet magnifier, election official buttons, etc., a six-outlet power strip, a three-foot USB cable, a headset with attached microphone, a keyboard, a printer, a docking station. Note, the tablet and folio cover will be shipped to you with the ballots and is not part of the bin inventory. Once everything is unpacked, find the power strip and plug the end into the power source, typically a wall outlet. 
If the wall outlet is too far away, use the 50-foot extension cord by plugging the end of the power strip into the extension cord and the other end of the extension cord into the wall outlet. You should be sure to turn the power off at the power strip until all of the equipment is assembled. The printer comes wrapped in a plastic protective cover. Remove the plastic carefully and save it in the green bin for use when the system is disassembled later. Other components come with protective covering also, and all of the protective coverings should be carefully removed and saved in the green bin for use later during disassembly and storage of the system. Place the printer on the table with the front of the printer facing the right side of the table as you face it. This placement will facilitate easy placement and removal of the pre-printed ballots or plain paper depending on whether the system is in the ballot marking or the ballot on demand mode. The printer also has a permanently attached black power cord that can be plugged directly into the power strip. The printer also has a short three foot light gray or clear colored USB connector cable. The cable needs to be attached to the rear of the printer on the side opposite the power cord. The docking station should be placed on the table in a position that will allow a voter to access the tablet touch screen, but with enough room in front to allow for placement of the keyboard. The docking station comes with a two-piece power cord AC adapter that connects to the docking station at the rear of the docking station on the left when looking at the docking station from the rear. The three-pronged plug at the other end is then plugged into the power strip. The USB connector on the printer must be connected to the docking station at the USB port at the rear of the docking station. The keyboard should be placed on the table in front of the docking station. The keyboard has a USB connector that must be connected to the docking station at the USB port at the rear of the docking station. Both ports will support either device and there are only two USB ports on the rear of the docking station. The other ports on the docking station will not fit a USB cable and have been disabled. The headset has a USB connector and should be connected to the USB port on the front of the docking station on the left hand side. Except for the tablet, the setup is nearly complete but not yet ready for power. The tablet with the folio cover will be delivered with your paper ballots in a ballot box marked with New Hampshire ballots and the state seal and with the NH Votes logo. Open the ballot box. The tablet is in the smaller box with two elastic bands. Remove the elastic bands and place them aside for use after the folio cover is removed and to use when the tablet is returned to the state after the election. Remove the tablet from the smaller box. The tablet comes with a protective folio case. The front of the folio case is held on with two magnetic connectors and can be easily removed by lifting the front of the folio case up and away from the tablet. The front of the folio case can be put back into the tablet box for reattachment when the system is disassembled. Remember to put elastic bands back onto this box before storing it in the green bin during the election. The back of the folio case remains attached to the tablet. The tablet mounts onto the docking station by a port located in the front bottom center of the tablet and a connector located in the center of the docking station. The tablet should be placed on the docking station connector by sitting it straight down on the connector and then leaning it back on the docking station support once the connection is made. The power strip can now be turned on and the printer and the tablet can be started. The printer must be started first. The power button for the printer is located on the top of the printer toward the front on the left-hand side. To start the printer, 
depress the power button for approximately three seconds. The tablet power button is located on the right side edge of the tablet, approximately three quarters of an inch from the top. To start the tablet, depress the power button for approximately three seconds or until you feel the tablet vibrate. The accessible voting booth provides a voting station for all voters regardless of disability. Some voters may require the room that the booth provides but not the accessible voting system setup. For this reason, a lamp and a magnification mat are provided for use by voters with low vision. The lamp simply plugs into the power strip and the on-off switch is located on its base. The magnification mat requires no setup. One for All can be configured in two modes. It can print out a completed ballot using plain paper or it can mark pre-printed ballots like those used in our AccuVote ballot counting machines. If the system is configured in the ballot on demand mode, appropriately colored plain paper, pink for the Republican Party, blue for the Democratic Party, and white for the general elections, must be placed in the paper tray that opens at the bottom front of the printer. The plain paper is placed in the paper tray and the tab at the back pulled forward for a snug fit. This tray can be extended to accept 14 inch plain paper by removing the paper tray, depressing the tab at the bottom of the paper tray, and then pulling on the back of the paper tray to extend it. If the system is configured in the ballot marking mode, insert the ballot face up and head first into the opening on the printer located above the paper tray. This opening can be accessed by pulling open the door of the opening that has the printer brand Brother printed on it. There is a corresponding opening at the back of the printer that is opened the same way. These two openings allow the pre-printed ballot to pass straight through the printer without excessively curling the ballot. When the pre-printed ballot is inserted into this manual slot, the printer will actually pull it in slightly to better ready it for printing. In this mode, the printer simply places marks onto the ballot of what the voter chose using the One for All software. You will be notified if a pre-printed ballot or a ballot on demand will be used for each election. Disassembly of the system simply requires turning off the tablet and printer, disconnecting all of the wiring, cords, and attachments, and placing everything back in the green Rubbermaid bin. Press and hold the tablet power button for approximately 12 seconds or until the tablet turns off. You will need to secure the tablet in the smaller box with the two elastic bands at the end of the voting so that it can be returned to the Secretary of State along with your return of votes so it may be reprogrammed for the next election. The tablet cannot be sealed in the ballot box at the end of the voting. The printer should be placed in the bin on its side, followed by the 50-foot power cord in front of the printer at the bottom of the bin with the six outlet power strip on top of that. Add the keyboard and then the docking station. The remaining equipment fits easily around the sides of the printer. The table legs can be snapped back into the storage position once the locking devices are moved up and out of the way. The accessible voting booth is made ready for storage by pushing in on the center of each side until the fiberglass rods disengage and the booth collapses. Once the booth has collapsed, align all of the rods and slip the nylon sleeve back over the booth. If you experience any difficulty with any part of the assembly or operation of this equipment, please call the helpline at 1-800-540-5954.